Well, good morning, folks. Welcome to our webinar today. Uh, this is a re-recording. We had a recording issue with our, our live version of this webinar, so we're re-recording it to place it up on our YouTube channel. So we won't have a live audience or questions and answers today, uh, but uh, we'll get you the information across. Uh, good morning. My name is Jason Watterson, and uh, today's presentation is going to be on hazard recognition. I think this is one of those really important subjects for each and every one of us, no matter what our job is, no matter where we work, uh, no matter who we work around, being able to recognize those hazards will help us to be successful when it comes to our safety, both on the job and at home as well. The thing we need to realize is that if we don't identify hazards, there are still hazards to us. They're still out there. They can still cause cause injury or risk to us in one way or another. So I want to start out today, let's let's just run through a few definitions so we really understand what we're talking about. <clears throat> First of all, hazard. We talk that's the that's the subject of today's presentation. And so the definition is a hazard. Uh, it's a situation that poses a level of threat to life, health, property, or environment. Like I said, a hazard can be hidden. It's something we may not recognize. It could be something as, as simple as a cord in our office. It could be as simple as a, a, an uplift in a sidewalk where there's a, um, a, an edge where I might catch my toe. It could be something that we leave sitting around because our housekeeping's not very good and we step on it and we trip and fall. It could be something up at elevation. As we hike through the mountains, we may see that there are boulders sitting up on the on the sides of a canyon that could tip and fall over. All of those things are hazards uh, to us potentially. Whether they're a ha whether they'll do something to us now or not is a some is really a, a factor of probability or risk. Um, just remember, hazards can lie in wait maybe for years, and they might they might get you. Hazards can involve things such as machines, chemicals, tools, um, the environment around us, the weather. Uh, energy sources, and sometimes people can become hazards to us as well, and the actions that they decide to do, uh, decide to take. Risk is really how we quantify a hazard. How bad is it, and what is the probability that it might happen? So here's the definition. A probability or threat of damage, injury, liability, loss, or any other negative occurrence that is caused by external or internal vulnerabilities and that may be avoided through preemptive action. I think that's the key part in here is that we have the ability to avoid risk if we take specific actions. But first, we've got to be able to recognize what the hazard is to us. And that's what today's presentation is, is all about. Um, in risk management world, in, in my world, we look at risk from how bad from an angle of how bad is it and how likely is it to happen how bad is it if the moon crashes or an asteroid the size of the moon crashes into the earth well that's pretty terrible right probably would bring about the extinction of, of pretty much all life forms on earth <clears throat> that's pretty bad what's the likelihood well, we've never seen it happen before. <clears throat> and so obviously the likelihood is, is probably low and we're not going to spend a whole lot of time staying at night, up at night, worrying about that. Sometimes catastrophic can, uh, consequences can be catastrophic, but the probability is maybe near zero. There are other things <clears throat> out there where the probability of something bad occurring, if I get... Uh, um, if, if I get a, or if I have paper around on my desk and I'm moving that paper from place to place to place, the probability of me getting a paper cut is maybe close to a hundred percent if I do it long enough, but the consequences are relatively minor, even though I might whine about the paper cuts that happened to my, uh, happened to my fingers or my hands. So everything in between 100% and 0% and, and catastrophic or minor, those are the details that we're concerned about and the things that we need to be risk managers to do. Your job title may, may not be a uh, risk manager, but every one of us manages our risks all the time, whether we're thinking about it or not. Okay, exposure. 
this is the state of being or of being subject to a loss because of some hazard or contingency. This is more of an insurance term <clears throat> than it is a general safety term. But I think it's a I think it's a good way for us to think about it. You take a look at this picture. Somebody taking a slack line tour, walking across, going across um, a slick rock canyon, maybe down in Moab. Um, if I don't do this activity, I don't have exposure to it. If I stay back away from that cliff, I don't have the exposure to a fall from a different level. But if I choose to take on the activity of slacklining, uh, particularly over an area like this, well, my exposure to dying by, by fall is much greater. Um, remember that um, we are all exposed to risk, whether we know it or not, and our, but our job is identifying those hazards and taking appropriate action in time before these hazards hurt us. All right, so how do we go about recognizing hazards? That's the question of the day. What do we, what do, we do to recognize those hazards? And the answer is, we got to look for them. We've got to go out and take a look at our surroundings, take a look at our tools and our workplace and, and the people that we're working around and say, what's out to get me? What is a potential hazard to me? And what is the appropriate action that I need to take from that? You know, in, in the state of Utah, we actually have some laws in place. Here's a, a big giant uh, slide full of words. That is a Utah state code for employees. We think about OSHA and that they regulate employers. Well, in the state of Utah, we have Utah OSHA or Utah Occupational Safety and Health is the official name. And in their regulations that set up set about what they do and what they regulate, there is this statement where it talks about employee responsibilities. Let's read that really quickly. It shall be the duty and responsibility of any employee. So that means it's all of us. If we're working, it's our responsibility, our duty upon entering his or her place of employment to examine carefully such working place and ascertain if the place is safe, if the tools and equipment can be used safely, and if the work, area, work can be performed safely. So as an employee, each of us have the responsibility to look around and recognize hazards and ask ourselves, can this be done safe? Are the tools safe? Is the location safe? Then it tells us after such examination, it shall be the duty of the employee to make the place tools and uh, or equipment safe then so so we have the responsibility to look at it if there's something wrong we have the responsibility as an employee as a worker to make it safe so if i can remove a hazard a trip hazard if i can uh, replace a damaged tool or a part um, I have the obligation, it says in there, it's our duty to do that. That's a, that's a legal term that says we really own that. That's our responsibility. But if we can't get that done, then it becomes his or her duty to immediately report the unsafe place, tools, equipment, or conditions to the foreman or supervisor. So there are multiple duties that we have there. I got to look around. I've got to recognize the hazards. I got to do something to fix them. And if I can't, I have the duty and obligation to report that to my supervisor. Wow, I think that's a, a that's a, a pretty strong statement there. It's actually something that uh, you, Osh, will take into account uh, if there's an accident um, or as they come in and look at your workplace. Not just the employer has a responsibility, but each and every one of us as workers have that responsibility to look for hazards and do something about them. Okay, good stuff. Um, hazard recognition should be a daily responsibility for everyone. And when I say daily, it really should be a continual responsibility. As I go throughout my day and I go into different work environments, I need to be aware and identifying those hazards with the overall goal to prevent accidents. We don't want people to get hurt. We want to have their fingers and toes attached and we want them alive. So, this is our duty as well. So let's talk about hazard recognition. This daily job, we want to observe our environment. 
ask ourselves specific questions about what, um, what our environment's doing. And as we answer those questions, get, um, actually name things. This name, put a name to a hazard. That is a that cord is a trip hazard to me that's going across the um, the office in here, and it might trip me and cause me to injure myself. Um, take the opportunity to eliminate hazards. We don't need that cord. We need to. You, there's an outlet on that side of the uh, of the room as well. Let's get rid of that cord, and then implement controls uh, to the hazards that we can eliminate. Sometimes we can't get rid of a hazard but there may be something that we can do to control it. Um, I'm working on a roof I, and, uh, and there's a fall hazard at the edge of that roof. Uh, OSHA allows us to do a warning line. Something as simple as I put up, I put up some um, warning tape and caution tape, uh, something that's bright and that I can see it that keeps me away from the edge. That's a fairly simple control that we could do for that. And it could be much more, much more complicated than that. We could put in a fall arrest or, uh, or a restraint system to keep us away from that edge as well, or protect us if we do, if we should fall. Okay. All right. So let's ask ourselves some questions. As we go throughout our day, what am I about to do when I start a new task? What is it that I'm going to do? And do I know how to do it? Have I been trained on it? Is this something that's within my skills and capabilities to do? Um, do I have what I need to do it safely? Do I have the tools? Do I have the personal protective equipment? Um, do I have the parts that I need before I dive in to do that task? These are all really important questions, and we can avoid many problems, not just in our safety, but also in our ability to get the job done if we ask these, ask these questions prior to doing any task. This guy's clearing a water line, and he has to ask himself, what's going to happen once I clear that water line, well, it's going to start filling up this trench that I'm in, and I'm going to have to turn it off. Now, I, it looks like this guy probably knew what he was doing, but he ended up pretty soggy by the end of the by the end of the task. What's the job that I'm doing? All right, let's ask ourselves some more questions. Um, how will my task affect other people? What will it do if I um, take this hammer and I and I hit this part. Oh, it might fly out and hit other people in the in the face. Um, if I start grinding and there are sparks that shoot out somewhere, will that impact somebody else? Well, yeah, there's somebody somebody working next to me and they're using a flammable solvent to do their job, and we may light a fire with that. Also, ask ourselves the question: How would the how will the other people's tasks affect me? We've had some situations where two people were work were working independently of each other, and one's work caused the other person to be seriously injured because uh, because of, uh, of something flew from what they were doing. Uh, we had a situation where where one employee caused a rock to roll down and crush another another person while they were doing their job. So so we have to look around and say, what are they doing and what am I doing and how do those things interact? Am I creating a hazard for them? Or are they creating a hazard for me? Okay. So what about my environment could hurt me? So ask, our, ask ourselves a question. Last night uh, at my house, we had a really crazy thunderstorm came through. And I actually walked outside, had the garage door open. It was such a, such a wild storm. I was just kind of taking it in, standing in the safety of, of my garage with the garage door open just to see what was happening when a lightning bolt came down and hit, hit a tree not very far from my house. And, uh, and it scared me pretty good, um, even though that was the purpose of why I was out there was to experience this storm, it, it, it uh, definitely got my attention. So what about the weather, the temperature, um, storms, flooding, 
many of you work in southern Utah where flash flooding is a fairly common occurrence. So if you're going to go to work in a in a storm drain during August of, uh, of the summer time of the year, um, there's a chance that you could get swept away with a with a flash flood. And so what would be my obligation um, going back to my my obligation to identify hazards? Well, if it's summertime when we expect flash floods, if I work in southern Utah and I'm going to be working in a storm drain or an area that's prone to flash flooding, I should take a look at the hazards by looking at the National Weather Service and seeing, well, there's, there is a flash flood warning here. And before I crawl down into that into that storm drain, I'm going to be looking to the sky, not just where I'm at, but upstream where a flash flood may be coming from. So our awareness of those hazards extends maybe even far beyond where we're looking. Remember, lots of hazards, different hazards can exist in the same workplace. Okay, other questions. Can I get caught in or entangled or crushed by a piece of equipment or a car? or um, a rock that I'm working with. Right now we have a lot of uh, a lot of our firefighters going out on wildland fire operations. There's a potential they could get crushed between boulders. People working in the in the right of way uh, out on roads could get crushed by cars. Uh, people working in a shop might begin it might get entangled in a piece of equipment, a lathe or a drill press uh, or some other tool like that. And so we ask ourselves our, those questions. Could I get caught, entangled, or crushed in this thing that I'm about to do? And, and if the answer is yes, what are the things that I can do to prevent that from happening or minimize the risk that it happens? Can I be hit or impacted by anything? So sometimes, uh, sometimes our operations may involve striking. Somebody's using a hammer to hit something. Well, I might be hit by something like that. Or we may have police officers out there um, at the firing range practicing with that. Could I be hit or impacted by a bullet? Yeah. And so we have controls in place. You have to stay, be stay behind that firing line. But sometimes, even at that, um, we'll have ricochets. We'll have uh, a bullet will hit a target frame and have a part, part of that bullet come back and strike an officer. So the important things to consider on that is I can't 100% eliminate the risk of that happening. So personal protective equipment comes in. I need to make sure I've got my safety glasses on. And, and if I'm out at the firing range, do I, do I wear my, my bulletproof vest? Well, it'd be a pretty darn good idea because there will be a bunch of bullets flying around there. Hopefully they're all going down range, but we look at our hazards and we put the controls in place. Could I get cut or punctured? This is a fairly common cause of injury that we see in our local government agencies. And uh, and they happen all the time. Generally, they're not super severe, but they could be. So what is there out there that could cut or puncture me? It might be the tool that I'm using. It might be thorns. I'm working out in the in the desert and there and there are cactus around. What things could cut or puncture me? Could I slip, trip, or fall? And where could that happen? Well, falls can happen. A lot of times we think of falling and having an injury from a fall. It's from a second level. I fall off of a roof or or something like that. But same level falls can be just as just as bad. So I kind of look around and say, what are the things that could cause me to fall? We talked about cords, but there could be a spill, some slippery stuff on the on the floor. You could have oil or grease out in a shop, a hose or or a part that could be left around. You drop a socket when you're working in the working in the shop, and here's this nice round thing that if I step on it and I'm unaware, I could I, I could take a nasty fall and strike my head, or uh, you know who knows what could happen from those things. So look around our areas and say, where, where could those falls happen? How could they occur? And please don't do parkour. Um, as much as it looks cool on social media, don't do par parkour. <laughs> Bad idea. Ask yourself, can I come in contact with energy sources? What are energy sources? Well, electricity, pressure, heat, Radiation, thermal radiation, all of these things um, are energy sources. 
So if I'm an electrician, well, <laughs> I have a very good focus on the electrical sources that are out there. But if you're working in a water system, are you aware of just how hazardous pressurized water can be or hydraulics or, pre or heat or you name it? the different types of things that we work with. Ask yourselves the question, what's the probability, and go from there. Because, ooh, ouch, things, bad things can happen. Can I cause a fire or property damage? Well, this is, a, this is an area where we've talked about recently, and somewhere in here, I'll probably put up a link to our hot work uh, webinar that we just did. We think that hot, uh, that hot work permits are an essential way to prevent fires. Um, it just puts together a program. So it makes me, it forces me to look at what the risks are, remove the combustible materials, ensure that I have extinguishing materials there, a fire extinguisher, a hose, or whatever it may be. And I do a fire watch. All of these things are <clears throat> uh, parts of fire prevention. And, uh, but it starts with recognition that, hey, I could start a fire by my, um, by the type of work that I'm doing and then taking appropriate action from there. Another question, could I get a sprain or strain? This is the, these are the most common cause of injury that we see here at the trust. And, uh, and they can be really nasty. If you've ever hurt your shoulder, your back or your knee, you'll know um, that sprains and strains are rough. How do I get sprains and strains? Well, generally, it's going to be from handling materials, moving those, moving things from one place to another, another lifting, um, or maybe putting myself in precarious positions for that. So I've got to identify those things and say, what is it that can cause me a problem? I've got to move a ladder from one place to another. Well, those ladders can get the best of you. Well, what happened? What happened in this video? Well, she didn't. Uh, she didn't really understand the hazard that she had, and uh, she should have folded that ladder up before she attempted to move it. And better yet, she maybe should have gotten some assistance to help in putting the in uh, moving the ladder from place to place use tools, use, use equipment and resources that we have to move things around to avoid those sprains and strains. Next question, can I come in contact with a chemical? Chemicals are all around us. We, uh, we have the potential to come into many chemicals in a given workday. And I don't care if you work in an office or you, work, or you work out in a water treatment plant or a sewer treatment plant, we all have the potential to come in contact with a chemical that can hurt us. So identify what those are. How do I know what the hazards are? Well, we can take a look specifically at our, uh, at our SDS sheets, safety data sheets, and understand just what the risk is and what the hazard is to, to us. Um, how do we identify where they are? Well, we identify by looking. And this guy, unfortunately, didn't look close enough, didn't uh, identify underground, underground utilities there and hit a gas line. Fortunately, it didn't ignite. Um, at this point, and he was able to get away, but that was a pretty exciting explosion that happened. Um, ask ourselves some more questions. What safeguards are necessary? I'm using a skill saw. Well, I, that's the brand name. I'm using a circular saw. Um, and, uh, and what type of safeguards need to be in place? On this one, you can see that the blade guard has been jammed in place. They put a wedge of wood in there to ensure that that blade guard wouldn't return. Well, what happens if I forget that happens and I set it down on the ground or I brush that against my leg? Those safeguards are necessary. Look for the guards. And, and like I said, for all of these things that are out there, we probably got a webinar for it. So if I can throw another link up somewhere, we'll do that. What safeguards are necessary and are they in place and working? That's an essential part of this is, are those, are those safeguards working? All right, now we've identified our hazards, we got to fix them. That's the important part there. And each of us have a responsibility as well as our employer's uh, employer as well. So fix those hazards when we, when we find those. Don't just say, uh, I identified it, I'm going to be okay. Fix them. The next person may not, it may not be as smart as you or as aware as you. Or you may come in tomorrow 
and that hazard will get you because you weren't paying attention to it then. So fix those hazards. Um, I've got a, I've got a uh, just a, a short list of these questions that we will send out uh, to all of those out there who signed up for the webinar today. And uh, anyway, just a quick list there. And I would recommend printing this up and putting it somewhere so you can see it. So you regularly go, oh, hazard recognition. I need to do this pre-task every day, every, every task that I'm doing, I'm going to go through a brief review of what those hazards are and ask myself a number of these questions. All right, so just in summary, this is our responsibility, every one of us as, a, as an employee, as, as a person, whether I'm at work or not, we've got to identify those hazards on a continual basis. At least daily, I'm looking at those things. Give them a name. Tell, this, tell what that hazard's going to do to me if um, I happen to come in contact with it or, or something goes wrong with it eliminate the hazards if I can. If I can't eliminate the hazards, control those. Let's put some controls in place. Let's put some distance between us. Um, let's do things to make sure that those hazards are less likely to hurt us. And then do it over and over again. That's really what it's all about. Normally I'd go to Q&A right now, but I don't have a live audience. So we're going we're gonna to wrap this up. But just, uh, just so you know, um, we are here uh, at the trust to help. So if you have questions, if you have if you have uh, uh, comments on this or, or need some more guidance and information on it, please feel free to give me a call, uh, send me an email. We appreciate you folks out there and all of the work that you're doing to uh, to make Utah a better place. Uh, let's also, as we do it, make it a safer place. And we appreciate you. Go out and have a safe day.